You know, every once in a while, you learn something and you sort of think you have an idea where it's going and then it does a 180 on you. It just goes in a completely different direction. The Rebbe had a secretary who passed away in 1967 or 68. So unless you're, I guess, middle-aged and older, you don't remember him. His name was Rabbi Leib Rothstein. His name was actually not Rabbi Leib, and his last name was not Rothstein. His name was Zusha. I forgot his last name. He was called Moshe Leib Rothstein because he ran away from Russia into Poland. And someone named Moshe Leib Rothstein died. And he was, I heard this from one of the Gordons, he was literally hiding in their house. And when this Moshe Leib Rothstein died, he, 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 this is Zusha from Russia, became Moshe Leib Rothstein in Amal. And this is how he lived all of his years. He was the Friedrich Rebbe secretary and he was the Rebbe secretary. He was really the only secretary of the Friedrich Rebbe that truly worked with the Friedrich Rebbe that the Rebbe adopted to be his secretary. He was the letter writer in Yiddish and Hebrew. He wrote letters for the Friedrich Rebbe, then he wrote letters for the Rebbe. He was an interesting man, a very happy person, very warm, very precocious, very social. He was effective. He used to go around and hang out with the Bachrim and so on. And uh, he was very easy to talk to. But he had this incredible way of answering every question you asked and giving you zero information. He was a secretary of the Rebbe. And of course, the first and last and all the rules in the middle of working with the Rebbe so closely is that you don't say what you hear and see. Ramal was the kind of person who didn't hide out. He was very available. But um, <laughs> he talked to you when he answered your questions and he joked with you and when you finished the conversation, you realized that he gave you no information that you hadn't had already. And Ramesh Aleib used to joke, he worked with the Rebbe, he went to the Rebbe every single day, six days a week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for dictation, he went into the Rebbe. And Ramesh Aleib used to joke that you work with the Rebbe long enough, he must have written hundreds of thousands of letters on the Rebbe's behalf, tens of thousands for sure. And he would joke and say that uh, you work with the Rebbe long enough, you almost feel like you can answer the letters on his behalf. You already know what he's going to answer to what question. He said it in Yiddish. He says, You already know what's coming, yeah? And As soon as you're about to feel like you're comfortable to know what uh, questions will be answered in what way, the Rebbe changes the rules. <laughs> you can never get it, you know? So you learn on occasion a maimir, and it just surprises you. This maimir is a prime example of that. What we're about to learn is a real surprise. I don't mean it's a surprise you're going to find uh, a bag of nash. The, the Torah, the eon, the idea that the Rebbe is going to propose is... Uh, Counterintuitive. He, he's going to start the shtickle. We're holding line 93 in what seems like a very reasonable way. And the progression is going to seem very logical. But the conclusion, what's going to happen in fact, is so counterintuitive. You're going to have to like read it three times to realize that he actually means what he's saying. Because you've been led on in one direction so completely that when the Rebbe finally tells what he wants to say, it's very, very different. And you almost like not expecting it. It's like a very, very big surprise. And I wanted to say this at the outset, so to speak, to prepare us for this unusual twist that this Maimon is going to take. And let me set us up, okay? Our Maimon speaks about Emunah and Yediyah, the mitzvah of knowing God and the mitzvah of believing in God. And as we discussed at length last week, what's unusual about this Maimon that he considers Yediyah Sashem and Emunah Sashem, the mitzvah of knowing God, the mitzvah of believing in God, Two separate mitzvahs by Minyan Taryag. In Terhagav, this week I gave a shir someplace. So somebody told me that in the Maimir of Haman of Selakus, the Rebbe brings a Rabbeinu Yayne, who take a hold that there's two separate mitzvahs. And the mitzvahs, I say, one is the mitzvah of knowing the Abish, and a separate mitzvah is believing in the Abish. And the question we discussed was faith is not a mitzvah, it's a pre mitzvah or a super mitzvah. How could Al Rebbe count your and Amun as two separate mitzvahs? And of course the answer was, emunah is not a mitzvah if you're talking about the emunah which comes before Yediyah. When you're talking about the emunah which is after Yediyah, they both are mitzvahs. 
There are things about God we could know and understand because we could see them. And then there are things about God which we cannot know because we cannot see them. Then we have to believe. In the technical language of the Maimir, as the soul fills the body and we're aware of its presence. So does God fill the universe and we're aware of his presence. That's the idea. We can know that concretely because we can observe it. The idea that which means that although the world is defined by God, God is not defined by the world. And there's so much more to godliness and to God, which is far beyond anything the world can tell us. In other words, to believe in the idea of Ein Sof, to believe in the ideas that are beyond what the world necessitates by its existing in the Creator. In other words, when you appreciate that there is much, much more to God than the world tells us, that you have to believe. So there's the idea, what I can know by observing the world, and then there is emuna, But not emuna, simple faith. Emuna means that there are ideas which I accept as true or factual about God, although I don't see them in the world because they're written in the Torah, and there there has to be an emuna. So the Maimed tells us, Ata harei saladas. God revealed himself to us means the God that we could observe in the world. Ladas, because he wants us to know. Then there's the second part. It's not enough to know what you can observe, what you can know about God by observing the universe and, it, and you can extrapolate backwards to the fact that there is a creator. But in addition, there is a separate idea of that those things about God that the world does not tell us because they're beyond what the world reveals, we have to believe. And then the Maimah said that you have to know what you believe like as if you could see it. In other words, the avoid of a person is first of all to understand God intellectually. And then to believe those things about God that you cannot understand intellectually. And then to be convinced, to be certain about those ideas about God that we cannot see. That we only believe as if we could see it, as if we could know it. In other words, the faith has to be internalized. And the Rebbe says that when a person internalizes faith, that's via daita. Ah, tarei saladas is knowing the malak alone. Via daita is taking the godliness which we can only believe because we cannot see it, and knowing it, bringing it into the is via daita. And the Rebbe connected it to, to. Um, Lasa is ba'aretz. Lasa ba'aretz means to take emuna and make it into yadiyah. And he connected it also to the idea of eretz zovas cholav advash. The man that flows with milk and honey. Milk that I've interpreted means growth. And honey that I've interpreted sweetness. So this becomes the second tier of the maimim. That in addition to knowing God that we're able to know. There's also to believe this that we cannot know, and then there is the internalization of that faith. This that we cannot know, we should be so certain and so clear about, like as if we could know it. Okay, this is what we learned last week. Let's begin line 93. Even this higher dimension, where a person not only knows what you could know about God, but believes this that you cannot know about God through direct observation, and then knowing this that you believe, that you cannot see by direct observation because it's higher than the world shows you, that this all gives you milk, which means an ability to spiritually grow, and honey, which means spiritual delight, adayin lohigia is still not yet reaching, lemailas umadregas, the level and the step of umol lohaaretz deya, the world to be filled with the knowledge, sheyihi el yasad lo, which is when Mashiach comes. When Mashiach comes, the Pasuk says, there's going to be a Diyas Hashem. And I want you to know that when you learn Rambam, and of course every Chabadnik learns Rambam, the Rambam talks in a number of different places, in Hilchas Tshuva, Perek Tes, Halacha Beis, in the end of Perek Yud of Hilchas Tshuva, and then of course at the end of the Rambam itself, Hilchas Molach and Perek Yud Beis, Halacha Hey and Vov, he talks about the idea of Yediyas Hashem, Ladas Hashem, it's about knowing God. The Rambam says you can't have Avaz Hashem and Yiras Hashem if you don't have Yediyas Hashem. It's a mitzvah to know HaKadosh Baruch And of course the Rambam finishes, Hashem. All the world is going to care about is knowing God. And according to this Maimah, that means 
that we take the level of godliness which we cannot see and we have to believe and raise ourselves to the point where even this that's beyond our comprehension we should know with such certainty like as if we see it, Yadir. Says the Rebbe, even this is the Zavas Chol of Advash we talked about last week is not yet the Madrega of a Mullah Ares Dea Shia Lasset Lovey, which is be when Mashiach comes, begin his das, Vahar Gosha Mamish, on a level of knowing and feeling. Because Mashiach can Chol of Advash, even the milk and honey, which we talked about last week, and what we said last week was that the faith becomes knowledge, don't get excited. It's still considered faith. So he says, even the idea that you take this that you believe and internalize it is still faith. Why? No one ever accused me of being able to keep suspense. The answer is because it's connected to time. The idea is as follows. Let's read now 996. We see, as a matter of fact, that the world has its own pattern, its own governance, its own style. And this pattern of the world is is the lower level of godliness, which reveals itself and manifests and shows itself in the world in a limited and diversified way. And what is that? That everything has a different time. Time is a division. What I do today, I'm not doing tomorrow. What I'm doing tomorrow, I didn't do yesterday. The idea that things fluctuate and that things change means that nothing is permanent. When you say that nothing is permanent, that means that even at the moments when it's present, because it will not be here a moment later and it wasn't here a moment before, its presence is not really absolute. The, mer- the very fact that tomorrow it could be not means that today it's also not real. In other words, anything which is subject to shinuyim, to change and to adaptation, means that even while it is, it's not truly r- real. We- what's, where do you have this in Hasidus? Of course, the answer is in Tanya, Sof, Perik, Yud, uh, Dalad, I believe. Where the Alter Rebbe talks about Emes. Truth. And he asks the question. The question that the Rebbe asks at the end of the Pedic there is, we know that the meaning of the word truth is consistent. For something to be emistic has to be constant. And he says, a Benini is not consistent. When he davens, he's inspired, he's aroused with Avas Hashem and Yeres Hashem. When he's doing other things, he's not in the same spiritual place. He falls from his level. He has just what's called a a trace of the inspiration of davening state. And the Altarebbe proposes that any time any person does anything that has no permanence, it's a lie, it's sheker. He brings the postage, svas, emes, tikin, la'ad, va'ad, argi, alashen, sheker, which means basically anything which is for the moment, anything which is for the rege, is sheker. So Altarebbe says, kum tachois, most people, in their spiritual relationships with God, where there are moods, there's fluctuations, even the most holy moment is a lie. What makes it a lie is not because they're not experiencing a holiness, but because anything you experience which comes and goes, even when it is, isn't real. And then al Rebbe goes in a whole discussion and he changes his mind. He says, no, if this is the best you can do, this is your truth, you can arouse the Avah Hashem, Yerush Hashem, anytime you wish, a bunch of things. The bottom line is, Al Rebbe holds when a Benyani serves Hashem, even though the service of a Benyani Ta'akadosh Baruch is in flux relative to the level of the Benyani, it's considered an emes. And of course, you have the famous words, Al Rebbe says in Tanya, Reini Kedi. I say about the Benyani's davening, Sfas emes, Tiki la'ad, v'ad agi l'shein shakir. It's the only place in Tanya where Al Rebbe says, I. And I once heard from a younger man, a friend of mine, whose name is the same as the Alter Rebbe, Shneir Zalman, that when the Alter Rebbe says, Hareini Kedi Bitfilose, Sfas Emes, Tikim Ad Vada Gil, Shein Shaker, notice that Pusik starts with a Shin and ends with a Resh. It's one of the Pusukim the Alter Rebbe used to say for, at the end of Shmenese. Each day, the Alter Rebbe said that Pusuk. So, Hareini Kedi, I say about a Benini, whose avoid is Muri, that it's not Emes. But in spite of what says in Tanya, this is a fact. If it's true, it should never change. If something changes, even periodically, it says that even while it is, it's not really real. Therefore, the Altar Rebbe says, we talked about knowing God that's knowable. 
Then we talked about believing in God that's unknowable and then making that faith into a knowledge. It says the Rebbe, even after one succeeds in knowing, in other words, having a clarity like as if you could see, about godliness and the level of save of Kalam, that it's real, it's still Amun. Why? Because of time. And the Alter Rebbe begins on line 97. It all begins with the serpent who invested in Chava, that represents all of Klal Yisrael, venom, Zuma, filth, the beginning of life, death. And 2448 years later, when God Almighty came down on a mountain and gave us the Tere, he took that Zuma, he took that filth, he took that potential for death away. However, the Jewish people made a short time later, literally, a golden calf, and they lost it. And then he goes through a number of examples. In the times of Yeshua bin Nun, they were loyal to HaKadosh Baruch and then for hundreds of years during the era of the judges they fell again and again in the times of kings David and Solomon they were also on a very high level and then they fell again the sin of Yeravam which was even a lower Madrege and so forth I saw once in the Rishonim that they say that from Mesha Rabbeinu until Tzitkiyo was 30, 30 generations and that David and Shleim is the 14th and 15th generation. Therefore, this is consistent with the cycling of the moon, the fluctuations of the moon. Just like the moon is born and it grows and it becomes full and then it begins to dissipate until it disappears, the Jewish people are the same way. Tzitkiyo was the generation of the Churban because he was the 30th generation. The point is that even the emes that we do acquire, even if the acquisition of emes that we're acquiring is to make from the moon a Yediyah, it's still... Not truly, Emes. V'chein b'chol deir, v'deir line one hundred to save it to each generation. This time of the year, time changes everything. V'gam b'mei atanoyim v'ameroyim. Even the generations of atanoyim and ameroyim, the authors of the Mishnah and the Gemara, ains mane echadei malachavei. Times changed. V'chol ha'item mishtanim. All units of time change. V'azmanim and the moments of time, mischalf and mishapchin are replaced and turned over. So the very fact that there is a fluctuation in time and that there's change shows that even if and when a person makes his faith into knowledge, it's not really knowledge, it remains faith. If I know God clearly today, I should know God clearly tomorrow. And I should know God clearly in 50 years from today. If one day in the future my knowledge of God becomes questioned, it means that even the knowledge and the clarity I had today was not so deep because if it was real, it could not be affected. So all of what we do, even our attempts at Yediyas Hashem, which is internalizing our knowledge of God, is never, ever absolute. It always changes. I know the fee, the reason for all these changes is because the godliness which is allowing us to know the godliness of the moon is all, the level of a Alam, and now what do we know about Amalek Alam? And that it's divisive, that it fluctuates. Shebechin is parts of this an image of a reish yad beregel of a head, a hand and a foot. There are diverse aspects to the other meelion, like the person down here. Ushad eivar the remaining limbs shein echadim elachaveri. First of all, the limbs are not the same as one another. Second of all, the pulos eivar mishtanim. The function of the limbs are various one to the next. And gam the palm keve echad eivar on occasion one limb hurts and so forth. And nechash was made weak for cholu and so forth. The kiyetsa bezashinu yim bemikrim. The idea that in our lives we know and experience and feel and see all kinds of variation, all kinds of fluctuation, all kinds of change. And the Rebbe says the fact that there could be change is a raya that even at the ideal moment of Yediya, it is still only ultimately a moon. Line 106. The same is true in each person. In other words, not just the collective of humanity. It's full of change and fluctuation. But each one of us as individual has similar kinds of change. A person can get an evil thought, speech, or deed. On other occasions will be aroused for doing tshuva. And doing good deeds. It's for game of the time even for tshuva. And the two souls that are debating or wrestling over our bodies intermittently come to dominance. And therefore, on occasion, you have bad machshava, Dibra Mais. On other occasions, you have a really And as the Gemara says, when one rises, the other falls. 
let's say that the two competing cities, we Yerushalayim and Tzir, Tyre, which is Phoenician, northern Israel, so Lebanon. And when one fell, the other rose, and when the other one fell, the second one rose. In other words, there's all kinds of changes and fluctuations. And therefore, even our most Yediyah Dikedei is still ultimately Amun. And the Alter Rebbe says parenthetically, this is a very good reason people shouldn't become depressed. When you see your own fluctuation, your own variations, this is an automatic effect of time that things change. And you should also know that just as this fluctuation and change have the ill effect, the negative effect of making even my greatest moment of truth not so true. On the other hand, I can make one of my worst moments, one of my evil moments, and a very positive moment. Because this is only because the energy in the world is a limited energy, a diversified energy, and therefore, even when I raise myself to the Madrega of Save of Kalam, and I raise myself to the Madrega of Save of Kalam, it should be in the Madrega of Yediya, right, it still has fluctuations. This is life. So, when the Postak says, and the Adaita means that you take your faith and internalize it, says the Alter Rebbe, that's true, but only to a point. The idea that taking your faith and save of Kalam and internalizing it and making it into a Yediya is true to the extent that something which fluctuates is able to have truth. Continues that Abba on line 111, Achlihi, But what the person wants is not just that he should have a knowledge of Seva Kalalman, but that the power of the idea of that knowledge of Seva Kalalman is coming from a Malak Kalalman, but he wants to know Seva Kalalman itself. And you want that Seva Kalalman should be Bebechinez Gili in a revealed way. And what does revealed mean? Bebechinez Daz Vargosha Mama, you should know it and feel it. And of course, Seva Kalalman is Ain Sof. And Seyv of Kalaman does not have any fluctuation or change or diversification and so forth. Since Seyv of Kalaman has no changes, an MS that is achieved is constant. In other words, when Tchiyas Amazim happens, we're not going to have good days and bad days, good kings and bad kings, righteous times and evil times, because the phenomena of change is a symptom of Mamala Kalaman. And therefore, even when you have a Yediyah and Seyv during an age of Mamala, it fluctuates. La'asad lavi, when Mashiach comes, the Tchiyas HaMesim occurs. The save of Kalaman itself is revealed. When the save of Kalaman itself is revealed, there's never any changes. So if you think about it, this is like a third level. There's Yediya, there is Amuna, there's making that Amuna into a Yediya, and then there is making the Yediya that that Amuna became into a higher Yediya that never changes, no bad days. Says the Rebbe, Tzarechli Yesu V'yarto Harav Gamer. I'm sorry for banging. I know there's one person who doesn't let me forget that banging is a disturbance. So, pardon, that was a mistake. You got to get rid of evil. V'yarto Harav. Think about this. It means in plain English, this is impossible without each one of us becoming a tzaddik. Which, of course, Hashem is going to help us do. But so long as there is evil in us, there's going to be fluctuation and change in our environment. That fluctuation and change of our environment makes even our truth not so true. We want not just to make save of Kalaman into a Yediyah like Mamali, but that the Yediyah should be a level on save it. In other words, we should know God on the level of knowing God on the level of the Ein Sof, and then it won't have any changes. For this, the Kli has to be clean. You have to have a It's not enough to be a Benyani who struggles. You have to transform the evil into good. Shazayihi Eliyasid love it, which will be when Mashiach comes. And Tchiyas HaMesim occurs, as the Apostle says, line 113, it will be realized, God predicts, God prophesies, and remove the spirit, the spiritual uncleanness from the earth. Moshe Enkin, as opposed to, and he goes back to talk about time some more. Bezman, Chobana, Ba'is, outer history, there's all kinds of fluctuation and change. We had other before the Chet, we had Meshe Rabbeinu, we had Yeshua, we had all the different stages. And the Rebbe says, in the time of the Chor ben Abayis, Shabayis, Rishon Hari ben Yashakin. The first base of Mikdash was destroyed because of false prophets. And don't misunderstand. If you and I would meet as false prophets, we'd fall to him in a heartbeat. They were pretty good. They were false, but they were good. 
the destruction the second base makes has to do with wanton hate baseless hate shame that these two ideas of listening to false prophets and hating a fellow Jew is is one against the other against faith which is higher than knowledge and the question becomes how could they be stronger how could false prophets how could Lashon Hara and wanton hate be stronger than Emunah, which is Lamal Das. And the answer is because even though this Emun is coming into Das, the Das is only from Mamalak Alam. And because only from Mamalak Alam, and even the Godliness has changed. And the Rebbe explains himself on line 116. But what I mean to say is as follows Just like we know on the side of holiness, there's faith which is higher than knowledge, which you then want to internalize into knowledge. Kain haya oz ben Yisrael, so too in the times of the base of Mithish, there was amongst the Jewish people a munais kezves, false beliefs. Vayim zel, yom azel, the one opposite the other. The degree of the evil of Avedah Zara had to do with the greatness of Kedushin, lahavdla and sadak Kedush. And this, of course, what we know, the time of the first base of Mithish was much holier than the time of the second base of Mithish, yet they were guilty of the worst Avedah of idol worship. Vine Ayaman line one eighteen. Ba Yisrish times the first place I make the Shbeis Gabra sit the Gedush. Holiness was dominant very much. It was the era of prophecy, of course. Hayagi Lushchina the Shchina was revealed for Aron VeKapedus and a holy ark, and the deck of the Aron says the Rebbe just because the Gedush was so strong. VeKach similarly there was also. The Galipa Klippa can become dominant. And the dominance of Klippa, of course, is rooted because of the original sin of other Machabe eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There was a strengthening not to believe in God. The women used to. Uh, Bemoan, lament the Tammuz. Tammuz basically means the sun, the hot sun. So they worship the sun. Omru with their words. They said to the Navi Yirmiya, When we listen to the Abishta, we don't have reward. When we listen to Klippa, we do have reward. So why should we listen to the Abishta? Better for us need to Klippa. The Kach, or Yirmiya, Yirmiya, Shek, and also the false prophets. The Hainu, this means the moon, this case, this faith, belief, which were a lie. Binovi and a prophet Lahamin to believe, much lady better the Shem things that Hashem spoke. Sometimes in the first base on Mikdash, on the one hand, did this incredible holiness. On the other hand, you had this steeped in Avedizara, reality which in effect um, brought about the destruction of the base on Mikdash. And the Rebbe, in the line 122, Mashiach came by Yesheni, in the second base of Mikdash, the Kedusha was lower and the Klippa was lower. Shechos, through Hei were missing five of the holy artifacts. There wasn't such a great Gilead Shechina, such a high level of prophecy, and therefore, there was in the side of Kalipa. His Gabras HaKlipa, strengthening the Kalipa, to such a degree. And therefore, the evil beliefs did not manifest in idol worship. The evil beliefs manifested in believing what you're not supposed to believe, which is Lashon Har. In what way did faith show itself that was ugly? To believe foolish things, superstitious things, nonsensical things in the world around themselves. To believe people who peddle gossip. To hate a friend. He sinned as this hatred is unwanted, unwarranted. The friend did nothing evil to you. Any person who refuses to believe what the gossipers are saying. He wouldn't hate his friend. Because it's unnatural to hate people who love you. And to hate someone that you love naturally. So therefore, where does the hate come from? From believing Lashon Hara. If you know your friend is not guilty, why are you believing? So the times of the first base I make that she says, there was so much godliness, so they believed in idol worship. 
time of the second base of Mikdash, there was much less godliness, but there was also Klippa, and they believed in gossip, which is a midara. What's the point? The point is that even the times of the Beis HaMikdash, and certainly nowadays, there are all kinds of fluctuations and change. And these fluctuations and change show that even when you're in the best condition, it's not um, emes. It's not yet full viadaita. It's viadaita slash amun. It's borderline yadi and amun. Now comes the twist. So you learn the maimer. And you say to yourself, okay, in the beginning of time there was a moon. Then people advanced and evolved into Yediyah. Then you say, Mashiach is going to come, there's going to be a much higher Yediyah. What's going to be nature of Yediyah when Mashiach comes? There'll be no flux, no change, changes in it whatsoever, right? Right? So listen to this. Line 128, This is the meaning of the one Mashiach comes, we will fulfill this passage of knowing God today and bringing it into your heart. To have a knowledge and a belief in the godliness that gives us life. For this, the mitzvah v'yadaita is higher. In order to affect, to know, to internalize. The level of godliness which is higher than the world. Like the heavens surround and embrace the earth. Similarly, the level of godliness which is revealed in the world. Himokephas has around itself a save of Kalam and a level of godliness which is beyond the world. Which affects such ain lach davish achutz bimenu, which means that everything is one with godliness. And the pasuk is saying that nowadays all we could know is mamalikala, and what we believe in save of kalam, and even though we call it knowledge, it's not real knowledge. When Mashiach comes, we'll have the madreig of save of kalam, and that we'll know it like we know now mamalikala. Line one, uh, thirty-four. Skip the beginning of the line. Go to the end of the line. The idea is, and this idea that we say, that a person could know God, and know God in such a way that there's no fluctuation in his knowledge, is going to be only when Mashiach comes. You know, there are several stories which I've told you many times. They're just the kinds of stories that's meditailed. One of them is a Gemara. The Be'ech and the is laying on his deathbed. And his students come to visit, his disciples come to visit him. And the students say to their rabbi, they should give them a brach. Rabbi Yezab ben Hukness and Rabbi ben Khanani. So he gives them a bracha. And the bracha is, quote, which means you should fear God just like you fear man. So Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Yezab were insulted and they said to their rabbi, Ad Khan, that's all. You'll be happy if we fear God like we fear man. And Rabbi Yechina Mezakeh said in a moment of truth, Olavai, I wish you would fear man like you fear God. Because if man, I'm sorry, I wish you feared God like you fear man. Because if man feared God like you feared man, he would never sin. Nobody sins and people are watching. Why? You're Tana. Because you could know and not know. Even when you internalize the faith. Even when you really internalize the Abish that in five minutes it could be gone. It fluctuates. The second story, which I've told you many times, is the Maizim of the Helik of Verov. He married a girl, moved into her home, and although I don't know the particulars, but we can assume that her parents were probably quite wealthy, and they were thrilled to have, in effect, invested in or purchased a son-in-law who was such a big bentator, would sit and learn day and night. And they loved him. And then he went ahead and became a chassid. He's a very emotional man to start with, so his avoider became very hysterical. And the beloved son-in-law became a crazy chassid. And there's a whole bunch of stories. The father-in-law finally came to the village of Erov one day and said to him, you know what, I, you know, as I can't beat him, join him, tell me, teach me what you learned in Mizrit, maybe I'll become a chassid myself. So the Levi Yitzhak Mubadichev said to his shver, I learned in Mizrit, it's the vice of now I know there's a creator. So the shver, the mechut, and the father-in-law says, that's what you learned? That there is a God? He walked out into the street and he brought in a, a maidservant, a goyish girl, 
never learned in any school, never learned in a yeshiva, was certainly never in Mizrich, brings her over to hold the Badish of Arab and says, Is there a God? And she says, Of course. So he says to the Badish of Arab, This girl knows there's a God, and you travel to Mizrich, change your whole lifestyle to learn that there's a God. So the Badish of Arab said, Push it. Zizukta zivais, ich weiß. She says she knows. I know. And of course, the difference between knowing and knowing is you know that there is a God and therefore you don't do what's against the Abish Tazratzen and you know that there is a God and you make sure you don't get caught. So the Altarebbe argues here that in Yediyah there's two Madregas. You could know God but tomorrow forget. You could know God and tomorrow have a hard day. And then there's the knowing God which doesn't fluctuate at all. What's the difference? If my knowing God is turning my Yediyah of Seva of Kalaman into a Mamala Kalaman Dek Yediyah. In other words, I know about God which is higher than the world. But I know it in such a way that tomorrow something can happen that I should lose my faith. That's limited. And the higher Madreg is that I know the God that I'm not supposed to know by the revelation of Seva of Kalaman itself. And that never changes. It doesn't fluctuate. The idea of Esruah Chatumah Avim in Oris, and the idea of Mola Oris Deis Avaya Kamayim Layama Chasim, that the whole world is filled with the knowledge of God, affects that I know God in such a way that my relationship with Him never changes. There's no moods. Save of Kalam. And that's what the Rebbe says. And we're on line 134. Says the Rebbe, the which means you want to internalize, you want to bring into yourself something which is higher than knowledge in a way of knowledge, which means you want to internalize it in such a way that it should be real and constant. Says the Rebbe Zehu Dafko Hayoim. It's only now. I know what now means? Now and not after Mashiach comes. Remember the first shir. You should know today. What's the today mean? Today and not when, and not tomorrow. That the Vyadaita, which means to take faith and internalize it and make it into knowledge, make God real. That on one level you're making God real, but it could change. And on a higher level you're making God real and it's constant. You should know Vyadaita, the internal, internalization of God that it should be real, constant, is now and not when Mashiach comes. That Kameha Yem La Seisam, just like in the Apostle Hayoim. La soisam, ayoy means today you work and Mashiach comes, you can't do any work anymore. Vilei lemochar belem habo. And when Mashiach comes, elam haba happens, there's no longer ayoyim la soisam. The same is true, the yadaita, the idea of making faith something higher than reason, is something that I know so concretely that it never changes, is only now. Because, she'ei lam haba o bechinah samal kalalim. Because the godliness that will be available for us to work with after Mashiach comes will be a limited godliness. In other words, the godliness which will be given to us will be the kind of godliness that fluctuates from step to step. May ill of all from cause to effect. Madrega, acha madregi, where there are higher steps and lower steps. Like we described before, the human body is only a healthy body if it consists of diverse different organs. Shesh peresh, v'yad, v'regel v'chul, you have a head separately and a hand separately and a foot separately. Kach, accordingly and similarly, yesh madreig, yes rabbis, are all these different levels. Ganeidin, elyein, the higher ganeidin. V'ganeidin, kach, the lower ganeidin. V'chuli, and so forth and so on. So when Mashiach comes and you have a revelation on Elam Haba, says the Rebbe, what's Elam Haba, Mamalek Alman? If when Mashiach comes with only a gil of Amalek Alman, how can a person have this level of a yadaita? That not only have they made what they believe into knowledge, they've made what they believe into knowledge in such a way it doesn't change, which can only happen loss at love, if loss at love there's no save of Kalaman. Ironic. And you know what the answer is? That the avoid that we do now, in our struggle, gives us a reward. The Yadaita, the idea that when Mashiach comes, we will know God in an ever and never changing way, which is a Kayach from Seva of Kalalmin, is from the Hayoim. The struggles of today allow that La'asid Lave, we should have a never ending, never changing kind of a knowledge and a faith. And here's how he explains it. So you should know, therefore, Hamaisim Vidiburim Machshavis. When Mashiach comes and Ilm Haba occurs, there'll be no Tshuva. If you did an action or a speech or a thought in Elam Habo, 
that was not good, Nasim Levushim Tseim Le'elam Haba, they'll become filthy garments for Le'elam Haba, and Ve'en Yachal Lifshet Esam, they're unchangeable. Ukilu Kasha Besak, like a person is trapped in a sack. Imloi, the only way for a person who will have done something wrong, or does something wrong, to correct once he's in Elam Haba, it's through Gehenim. Aydei Kafa Kelo, Kuyetzev, they have to suffer. Lahatir, Olafki HaKesher, Vechol. Once Mokhar comes, once tomorrow comes, if something is wrong, it remains wrong forever. If something is to be fixed, it can't be fixed through the avoid of the person, it has to be fixed through Yisur. Mashayin Ken Hayyohim. Today, we could correct things. Today, we could correct things to such an extent that we can create now a power, a possibility for a Vyadaita. I'm creating it now. And it will give me the Yasad Lovey that what I believe I should know in such a way that it has no moods. Today, through our Avaida, we could bring godliness down into our heart. Because Shayim in this life, Yochel Levaded or Lahafredara. A person can bring clarity to and separate good from evil. And this is Adeham Shocham Bebechin the Save of Kalam. And I really save of Kalam. So what did the Rebbe do here? He he almost fooled us. Yeah? He says, there's faith, there's fluctuating knowledge, and there's absolute knowledge. Faith is natural. Fluctuating knowledge is effort. Absolute knowledge is revelation of Seva of Kalam. He says, you should know absolute knowledge, which is a revelation of Seva of Kalam, which will have liyasid lave. When you have no evil, is affected by what we do today. Now, by say, this idea, you know what I was saying to Pashas Pinchas in the Kutateta. It's a famous idea. You have it also in the Derech Motzesach of Mitzvah's Vidi of Chur. You see, we live in this world. I don't know what you think of life, but from a spiritual perspective, from a God-centric perspective, it's a pretty bad place to be. It's Rubik Kulera, the Shayim Gevenbeh, it's all full of all kinds of evil, it's very distracting. It is not exactly a holy place to visit. But it says in old Maimonim in Hasidus, there's something about this world that's different than all the higher worlds. And you know what that is? In the higher worlds, everything is organized. And in this world, everything is mixed up. Now ask any person, which is preferred, organization or chaos? Of course, organization is better than chaos. But you see, in organization, there's nothing to improve. There's nothing to correct. In chaos, there's much to improve and much to correct. And Hasidus argues that in this world of chaos, because of the chaos and because of the entanglement, hidden within all the filth are sparks of godliness, are latent potential godly energies that if and when revealed, will reveal save of Kalam. In the higher worlds, everything is organized. If everything is organized, everything is wonderful and peaceful, but there's no possibility to access an infinite koyach. In the language of the Maimorim, tshuva is only here. There's no tshuva in Gan Eden, and there'll be no tshuva in the Lovey. What is tshuva? Tshuva means I did something wrong, and what I did wrong is bad. What I did wrong, that's bad. There's a wall between me and my own relationship with God. But now I can do tshuva and shatter that wall. And when I do tshuva and shatter that wall, the wall doesn't only go away. That evil wall's energies are released and it becomes the most potent godliness a Jew can have. The godliness that came out of evil. The godliness of tshuva. Lost of love, there's no tshuva. Says the postak for yadaita. You wish to know God. Know means not to believe, but to know. Not to know in a fluctuating way, but know in an absolute way. You should know Hayyim. It's all now. After Mashiach comes, that's impossible. Because after Mashiach comes, whatever is, is. It's organized, it's orderly, it's good, it's limited. And if something is not good, you cannot correct it. And if you cannot correct it, you can't gain the reward of having transformed the evil into good. If God corrects it, it's God's business. So the Torah says, if you want that in Eilam Atchir, you should know what we really are only able to believe in such a permanent way that not only do I know it, but I know it in a constant and unchanging way, it's now. You want a good Eilam Haba? Work today. 
Because the work that we did today is not just the Tate and Mitzvahs per se, it's the Gili of Seva Kalaman. And he goes back to what he said last week. Al Yedei Vahoyu Advarimail, by Tate and Mitzvahs. That the mitzvahs come from the Ebi himself. That mitzvah he commanded us. And again it says that word. Hayoyim. Now, through Teir and mitzvahs, you're Megal Seif of Kalam. Sha'atayr v'ham mitzvahs he mebechin the Seif of Kalam. So, if you want v'yadayit al yasad love in a way that's never changing, it's all about today. Because tomorrow you won't be able to do anything about it. it says the Rebbe on line 143, v'yadayit This explains now we have to create the possibility of the Aviadaita. So Tayra Mitch is entered true. So that Li also love it should be. Havayahuhalikim that the godliness of Save of Kalaman should be not just on a level of a moon, but should be in a level of your dia and an unchanging level of your dia. And the Rebbe spells it out. Havayu Bahina's gila. Havaya means how godliness is revealed. Alakim is Bahina's Hestavit Simsum Alakim means how godliness is concealed. And that the godliness which is concealed should become in a state of revelation. And become in a state of revelation in such a way that it never changes. This has to do with Hayyim. Just like we know that in general there's all kinds of contractions and concealments. Bechin is a Malik and the diverse levels of Malik There's all kinds of changes. Time changes. But higher than all of those fluctuations of Mamala Kalam. Kach yesh bechina save of Kalam, which is bechina savaya, godliness, which is ain't soft, which is the revelation of godliness on a level where there is no change. Says the Rebbe Zegilu. This reveals godliness. While bechina selakim, hai nu ha hester vetsimtu. And elakim means. The contraction of the concealment, because even when you have your dear, there's an opposite of this your dear. Says that there needs to be to create the possibility to know God, as simply as opposed to simply believing God. Now, to bring it down to our heart. And what we want is that the work we do today should affect that the Vachin as his is the bending that we do today should ultimately be to the transforming and the eradication of evil altogether. in which will be realized when Mashiach comes and Elam Haba happens. When Vesru, Achatuma, Avim, and Aras, God Almighty removes all evil from the world. And when all the evil is removed from the world, then there will be Umala Haaretz, day of a gamer. We'll be filled with the kind of knowledge of God in which there is no fluctuation. Because the ha'aret tiret says haveina, even the evil is made into a merit. I know she's in this new kizachis, and the fact that lost love, we will have this kind of yedias Hashem, is entirely dependent upon the hayoyim. So, if, what's the takeaway from the maimed? The takeaway from the maimed is several things. First of all, we're not perfect. Even on our good days, we know that the good day is going to be followed by a subsequent bad day. The idea has moved, it fluctuates. Second of all, we should understand that the fact that we have good days and bad days is because we're struggling with good and evil. And this is the basis for the idea that there will be a time when there will be only good days and there will be no struggles because the absolute idea of loss and loving is the Vyadaita Hayyim. This is an incredible twist. It's a very big surprise. The Vyadaita Hayyim creates the idea that loss and loving will be a permanent Ki Havayahu Alakim. And as we all know, Genug Droshes, at Mosai, the famous story with the Rebbe Marash and the Rebbe the Tzemach Tzedek, where the Tzemach Tzedek predicted that Mashiach would come. And Mashiach didn't come. So the Rebbe Marash said to his father, the Rebbe the Tzemach Tzedek, where is Mashiach? And the Tzemach Tzedek responded by saying, we printed the Lakut Tera. So the Rebbe Marash said, we don't need a messianic book. We need Mashiach. Kipshute, Lamata, Masarat Fachem. And we, we, Yoytze, the Hayoyim, now we should have taken the ultimate Viyadaita.